So let me take this opportunity to welcome you to this training. And today you're going to look at Microsoft Excel for beginners. And you're going to look at the basic concepts in Excel, some definitions, some concepts, how to interact with the, this software, and how we can use this software to gain, enter data, analyze data, do some configure, some, do some uh, formulas, do some calculations using some formulas and functions. And, and data, we're going to look at how we can use, analyze data using charts, how we can sort filter data in preparation for the other course that will come later, that is advanced Excel and other functions. This is wide, but we are going to first of all look at the basic concepts in this in this lesson. First, what you have here is we have opened Microsoft Excel. If you go to the file, the menu, and you click new. It gives you a workbook, but you can also create a file. You can create, uh, when you click new, for example, it opens a new workbook and you can create your, your Excel file from a blank workbook like this one. Alternatively, you can Until you can create from template. And when you go to template, you'll find quite a number of templates. We have, like for example, a template on budgets. We have a template on the credit card payroll creator. We have a template on family budgets. We have templates on personal budgets. And there are quite a number of templates which you can use based on on the need. We have others on mortgage, loan calculator, daily schedules, annual financial report, and we'll come back to to this uh, to these templates. First, uh, as a beginner, I would like us to to start by creating from a blank workbook. So you click back and then you click create. So uh, this, with this workbook, we have something like this. And in the in a workbook, it normally contains one or more worksheets. So we have a worksheet here, number two, with some put data there, add, put add in. And you can add more by clicking on this button. So these are worksheets. So in, a, in a one workbook, you can have several worksheets. Then on, on the menus, here we have these tabs. So we have the menu bar here, but we have tabs here. And under each tab, we have this ribbon. So if you click on insert, it changes. And it has quite a number of tools, as you can see. If you go back to home, you go to data, you'll have to find all these sort of tools. Let's go back to home. And you'll see quite a number of, of tools here under this ribbon. Then below this, this we have what you call the formula bar. And in the, this formula bar, anything that you put, any content that you put on the cell, for example, like this one, will appear here on the formula by the content of that cell. If you write a formula, for example, it's equals to two. So in this cell, we have two plus three is five, but in the form in the formula bar, we have the the formula itself. So the content of the cell. So in this, uh, in a worksheet, a single worksheet can store if you're using Excel like 2016 and above, it can store about a million, more than about a million records. Slightly above one million records in one worksheet. And it has uh, about, that is the number of rows, and it has about 16,000 plus columns. 
The columns are labeled using the alphabet. So we have A, B, and as you, as you, as you can see, there are several. So from A, then you go to A, 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 B, A, C, like that. That's how the columns are labeled. Then we have the rows uh, labeled in using numbers. One, two, like that. One, two, three, like that. Then inside this worksheet, we have a cell, like this one is a cell. And this cell has a reference. It's important to note that uh, the cell is labeled using the column and then the row number. For example, this is column A, this is A1. We come to row number 10 here. This cell is A10. This is B10. This is B4 because we are in column B, row number 4. It's important to, to know how. Because, for example, when you want to calculate, when you, when you do the when you do the calculations in Excel, you will be using the in uh, in the, the in those formulas. You'll be using the, the 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 reference of the cell to do that to to get the data that is inside those cells. Then, for example, if you want to select the entire column, you click on the header. This is the Column header A, B, like that. We want to like that. If I want to select several, I can click the first one, hold shift, click on this other one up to F. So I've selected the entire of those columns. And this is what we call a ridge. A ridge is a group of cells. For example, you can also have a ridge from here up to that. That is a, a ridge, is a group of cells. So it can also be a range from A to A10. That's also a range. And to select a range, you click on the first cell, A1, for example, hold shift, click on the last cell here in the range, and it will select for you that. Alternatively, you can click, hold, and drag. You click, hold, and drag to select a range. If you want to select the entire row, you click on the row number, row headers, before. Five, and if you want to select several, you can hold shift. That's how you select that. Then we have the these other tools which can you can use to format data. Format data you can make it bold, italic, put color like that, and look that later. So um, with that with that now, we can we can we can look at how we enter data. So first, we, for example, we can come here and enter the date. Date. And, and maybe on the number. Then uh, the item here. And the quantity. The price. And the quantity like that. So, for example, let's say it's first of January. The date there. Twenty twenty one. We can increment this. If, for example, we want to by dragging. And as you can see, that will auto increment up to date number up to the 13th day of january you can change the format for this column because you will, this is date format so you can click on format cells then you select date then you select the, the format of your date for example let's say we want this location and click OK. So the date format has changed. We can, for example, say we want to start with the order number 1001 and 10 other than 2. And we can also increment this by selecting the two cells. Then 
we out of it by clicking on this and dragging. So it will increment. So the, 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 system, the, the system is able to detect that uh, the pattern is plus one and it will increment that. Just in case, for example, you want to. You have one and you have five there. Not for that pattern, you can select the two cells. And drag. And you can see the. To be the difference is four, so it will be plus four, four, four like that. If you want to. Out of field, maybe a certain number would be just one. You could just click there and. That is it, that's how you copy. In Excel. Then we can have the items here, the items that were sold will be product A. So now we are entering the, the data and you can see if you click here, that is a really and let's say for example, this was selling product A. And they are selling this one at. Price of half 500 per so we can double click that. To auto fill that. And. The quantity. Yeah, I can. There are two ways. Maybe I can enter the quantity or can I can let the computer generate for me the quantity. Maybe I can just say is equals to. There is a function. And you look at this later. I want this is quadrant. It is used to generate numbers at random. And. So it's that. Now you realize that it's generating numbers between uh, between zero and one. This is zero point one, zero point one up to one. Between zero and one. So I can multiply this by a hundred to get good values there. Then I can also round off this using a function called call round, and I will explain this later. And I want to round off this func this the output of this function into zero decimal places. So that now we have the quantities like that. So now that is our data. We have columns, we have the headers here. We can make them bold. And we can also maybe insert another column. Oh, sorry, another, another load there above. And we can give this, we can put the title here. We can click margin center. Then we put our title here. X, Y, X, Y, Z store, for example, like that. And we can make it bold. We can add the font size like that. Now, one thing that you realize is that uh, in case you have data that extends, maybe data that extends because the column with the 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 wind or the and the the height of the columns are, are can be different. Maybe you have more data. For example, product A. So in case you have something like that, that's overlapping. So what you need to do is just click on the header and double click there on the on the this line on the header and it automatically adjust. Alternatively, you can you can use you can hold Alt Alt key then enter so that to wrap text. So that now the data is the goes to the next column, the next row, next so the, the next line. So let's mean that with that. Now the columns are able to adjust themselves or the same. If you want to, you can. You can increase the width, the height of the of the rows, or you can double click so that the system will adjust automatically. With that, you may want now to to do some calculations. 
So what is the total price here? And this is how we do it. We say is it cost to? There are two ways about it. So we know that the, the total here is a product of the price per item times the quantity. So click this is D3 multiplied by the quantity there and we get that. And we can copy the formula. Alternatively, we can say is equals to, because the, not that uh, here, sorry, not that here we have the formula, but we also have inbuilt formulas. In other words, we call them functions, which enable us to do some of these things. For example, I can right there it goes to product product then indicate click on the first cell comma and the second one so this function product takes will take the, the values in the, this in these two cells and multiply them and I can get the same. Then I can out of it. So not that uh, because my numbers, my quantities were generated at random, the values are changing as I change on the cells. Now, that is how you can do that by trying and out of it. Then, then I can, I may want to to add how many maybe want to know we want to know how many products how many uh, how many pieces were sold of product a so i can click here then we have this one out sum click on it it will select that range and once you press enter, you will get that value. Then you can also, we also want to know the total for the total sales, total revenue here. Let me just six. So we have the values there. Then if I want to format it, can format that column. If you want to format it in currency, I can maybe put it in dollars by clicking on this. And maybe when we want to remove the, the decimal press, the decimals, so I go to currency. Yeah, now I want to up to zero decimal and click OK. So that is formatted now in currency. I may want to get the the average average sales. So I'll click put that. Is it cost to average? Then select the range where I want to get the average. And the average is star. Remember, you can still do the put it in number format with zero decimals. Then the average total price is that. Now, I may want to to copy this data and put it in a different cell. Note that this data has formulas. So if we want to copy, so I will control C, copy, and paste it in, the, in another worksheet. Worksheet, but this time I want to paste values only without the formulas. 
So if you look at this, now we have values. We don't have the formulas. Now, the, the, you realize that uh, this column has changed. It's giving us the serial numbers. Instead of giving us the, the date, it's giving us the serial numbers of the dates. So you can go back to format and do that. It has also lost the format here. So you can select. You can select that, then merge and center. Then you can make it bold. Like that. Now, remember, you may want to freeze this pane so that when you scroll data when you have a huge amount of data when you scroll this this the the headers will remain intact so you just need to select that you go to view and you can freeze either pane or you can freeze top row and if you want to unfreeze just click and freeze so when you scroll you will not be so when you when you click on this top row, it will freeze only the first part of the first row. But if you click on maybe the second row and you freeze pain, it will freeze and row number two upward. So when you scroll down, you can see. So I need to so I can freeze that and freeze again so that when I scroll like that the columns remain intact there thing we want to zoom and have a clear view can be maybe zoom up to 150 like that so remember in a, if you want to to sort this data Maybe from the highest to the lowest. You can click on select that range where the data is. Then you go to data and you click on sort data. Then you indicate the column you want to sort by the total sales from the highest to the lowest then okay so we have the data sorted you may want to filter data so you can click on filter and then maybe you want to filter the sales for a certain date you come here and select the date that you want maybe date three and we'll get the sales for the three. You can move the filters by selecting all like that. Then you may also want to calculate, for example, the VAT. And let's say the VAT is 16% of the total sales. So you click on that. Then it multiplied by 0 0.16. That's the VAT. Then now, so that is so VAT for that. You may want to maybe can do some uh, other. Let's say combine, combine, combine columns. If we have, we want to combine more than one column. For example, and we want to combine the, the product and the price into one. So, and maybe call it this name it description. How do I go about it? So you click on the equal sign. 
then you select the that cell use that side that and side on top of seven then you may want to put a hyphen and then now the price so whatever you put in quotes like that so so that's a this is a d2 a percent again d2 like that so that that now combines so it uses d3 the cell is d3 and then when you drag this it will change now note that uh, this reference keep on changing as you drag the reference keep on changing and this kind of reference is called relative reference but there are those references maybe you want to reference to a cell and it doesn't you don't want that that cell that the value to the the reference to change the reference is normally say what we say is locked so for example if you want reference to the value in that cell would have come here again and say this is equal to the f3 this is f3 multiplied by this is k k3 so we put the dollar sign to lock the quorum k and put another one to lock the cell the row number row, the row that is row number number three then you press enter so then when you out of field this you realize that uh, this formula has a part that is changing and the one that is remaining is so if you look at this the, the formula bar here we are now at f6 but you are still and the and the row and the and by this you're still defining the cell k3 because it's locked so that's the difference so we have that relative reference and you also have that part that is absolute so when you drag when you copy formula to other cells the value remains the same now today i would like us to stop there and maybe we look in, the, in our next lesson we look at we look at uh, formulas and functions and i say functions are input formula and for example if you click on this one this here this shortcut here you will find a number of functions for example the best thing with this formula builder it, ex it explains to you what are the parameters that are needed in that form formula or in that function for example you go to average you'll see that if you go to max for example maybe i want to well, i have uh, some values i want to get the maximum for example i may want to get the maximum from here is equals to max then you drag that it will give you that so we'll uh, we'll be able to look at other functions and formula and different categories of functions like we have some in uh, some in uh, in financials logical we have text date and time look up the references we have mathematics and trigonometry so it's going to be a, a a full video on that thank you very much and meet in the next video thank you